Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. The supernatural power of God should be a natural part of our lives. That's what you told us on the programme yesterday, Colin. Our programmes have all been about how to develop a positive faith attitude. And specifically, you're going to talk about healing today, a subject very close to your heart. Yes, uh, it's, a, it's an enormous subject, and we constantly refer to it in these pro- programmes. Uh, but let us just deal with the subject within the context of what we're speaking about this week, how we can have a faith attitude towards uh, healing, first in our own lives and then in the lives of other people. Now, uh, I'm going to say something that is of uh, supreme importance. The flesh, which is your own natural life, is intrinsically negative. It is full of unbelief. And uh, unfortunately, the flesh will be with us even to our dying day. It's because of its negativity that uh, Paul says the flesh is absolutely opposed to the spirit. The two are in opposition to one another. When we uh, grow up, we have so many naturally negative um, thought forms Uh, mindsets, attitudes, because of the influence of the flesh in our lives. But once we're born again and we become a new creation and God comes to live in us by the power of the Spirit, then he is teaching us to think and to have the attitudes of the Spirit rather than of the flesh. Now, when we look at situations with the eyes of the Spirit, we see those situations as God sees them. And with such things as healing, therefore, we have to, if you like, deny, fight against, reject our natural fears and inclinations and choose to adopt the positive attitude of God, of his word, of the spirit. Now, it's difficult to do that If you are suddenly confronted with a problem, say a major healing need, and you're not already in a place of faith. You see, God doesn't want us to be basically living in negativity and in unbelief. And then when a major need arises, say, oh dear, I need to trust God, I need faith. Oh God, give me faith for this situation. Uh, It's perfectly reasonable to want God to give you faith in that situation, but how much easier it is if you are already full of positive faith attitudes so that when the need arises, when the unexpected happens, you already have a faith attitude. In other words, you meet the situation with a faith attitude instead of realizing that you have a negative attitude of unbelief. And now you've got to try to get rid of the unbelief. And and it's so much more difficult to do that when the actual need is pressing in upon you. Now, how do we get a positive faith attitude? Well, this is what I'm explaining in this series of programs that we believe what God says, basically. We agree, we learn to adjust our thinking to bring it in line with God's word. The Holy Spirit will help us in that because Jesus says that he will guide us into all the truth. He will remind us of everything that Jesus has said and done. He will take the things of Jesus and declare them to us. So the Holy Spirit is wanting not just to inspire faith in us for a particular need, although he will do that, but he wants to create within us those positive faith attitudes so that day by day those attitudes lie behind the decisions we make, the actions we perform, but also the way we react to the unexpected, the way 
to which we react to the bad news that we are sick or or that there is some other need that has to be met. So you can have two Christians who both are born again, both have received the Spirit of God, yet one can have a positive mindset and another a negative mindset. They can receive exactly the same news. They might be told, for example, you have cancer and only a few months to live. But the one with a positive mindset will immediately not deny that the cancer is real, but he would see, as I was explaining yesterday, he will see the situation resolved. He will not meet the situation with fear, but he will meet the situation with faith. So he he doesn't disbelieve the diagnosis, but he doesn't accept the prognosis. The prognosis medically is you will die in a few months, but the faith prognosis is very different. No, the faith prognosis says no way. The faith prognosis, no, I will be healed of this disease. Now, you see, the person is starting from a position of faith, but the person that has um, has not got that kind of faith attitude, but a negative attitude, hears this, and immediately there is fear. Immediately there is um, a, a negative reaction to the news um, that, 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 that they have just received, and they begin to feel desperate. Now, they might realize it because they're Christians. Well, wait a minute, Jesus Christ heals. But you see, they've got, they've got to get from the place of unbelief to faith. They've got to get from a negative attitude to a positive attitude right in the middle of this particular situation. So how much better it is to be a people of positive faith because this is what God is wanting of all of his children, not just so that we can react in the right way if we're ever diagnosed with a terminal disease, but because God wants us to have a positive faith attitude to all the events that arise in our lives day by day. And not only our own personal issues, but he wants us to have a positive faith attitude so that we can minister powerfully and effectively to other people around us. Some people listening to you, Colin, might be a little bit concerned because I'm sure you're not saying this, but can you just clarify the point? Do some people die because they don't have the faith to believe that they'll be healed? The only honest answer to that is yes. Sounds quite harsh. Uh, It sounds harsh, but then what does Jesus say? According to your faith, let it be done to you. Um, However, let me say immediately that I would never, ever say that to anyone. My job is not to undermine faith, but to build faith and to build confidence. But, you know, I am often asked to pray for people in very dire circumstances. And sometimes I know the miracle is going to happen. I know there is faith in that person. I know the Holy Spirit is witnessing faith in my heart. And it doesn't matter how desperate the situation or how near to death the person is. I know they're going to be healed, and they are. But I can be in other situations where I know there isn't real faith, there isn't ex- at least faith for healing. There may be faith in other ways, but not faith for healing. There isn't really faith for miracle. There may be hope, you know, where we hope something will happen or we'd like to believe that something would happen. But you just know it isn't going to take place. And, and I would never say to someone, look, um, there isn't the faith here, there isn't... Um, Uh, you know, you're going to die or anything like that. I would always minister positively to that person because I want to build faith. And even if I know um, somebody is going to die, I want to build assurance in them so that they can not face death with fear, but with the confidence of what lies beyond. So, you know, it's not a question of, of saying, well, Uh, we can control everything uh, by our faith. 
Our faith has to be in the goodness of God, in the love of God, in the grace of God. But you know, the the situation, Julia, really is that when, when you have a little bit of experience, and I've been involved in the healing ministry for 45 years, uh, you, you do learn to detect when faith is real. I mean, sometimes there are people who say, oh, I believe, I believe, I really believe. And the more they carry on like that, you know, well, they don't, they're, they're really trying to suppress their unbelief rather than really believing. There is something so natural about faith, so normal about faith, uh, you know, a faith attitude is, well, of course, of course I'm going to be healed. Um, it's not frenetic. It's not frantic. Uh, where the, the, it is, as it, we read in um, the epistle to the Hebrews, the rest of faith. There's a peace about it. There's absolute peace. There's a certainty. There's an assurance. And, and uh, I can understand that when a, a Christian is, is ill, he can be surrounded by people that are really frantic to see this person healed. But actually, that, that frenzy is not really a faith, although it can be full of all kinds of faith language. What God wants, you see, is for us to be people of faith who have this trust in God that it doesn't matter what happens, he's in charge. And if I trust him, his best will, his sovereign will, is going to be released into those circumstances. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 